Hello. In today's video, we're going to be going over BPM. BPM itself uh, intuitively looks like a very simple application to learn, but when you start to um, look under the hood, it's a much more complex application than uh, you would expect. In today's video, we're going to be going over uh, users and roles and the various application requirements, uh, permissions necessary in order to be able to access screens or do work that you are assigned to do um, based on the type of role you are uh, working with or being. First, what I'd like to start off with is the uh, basic web logic user. These are maintained in my particular system and environment in the WebLogic LDAP. It's an embedded LDAP. And it allows me to create users and uh, specify particular groups that they might be members of. So you can see that I have the user Stuart and I have uh, the groups administrator. He's an administrator. And you can see that these are all the different types of groups that or yes, groups that are available. Now, please note this cross-domain cross connectors, because I will be referring to that one, uh, just uh, it's a unique name, and allows me to indicate that this particular group we're viewing comes from the LDAP. So uh, again, the users are Doug and Stuart, um, and the groups are these. And uh, you can assign users or groups to users, and you can also assign uh, groups to groups. This is super user and they are both, it is both a, an administrator and a deployer. So I could assign super user to a user and they would have all of these particular privileges within the application. So that is the very first type of role that I want to go over in today's video. And this is uh, set up in the WebLogic console, or if you have a, an LDAP hooked up in a corporate system, um, the information all stored would be stored in that corporate Active Directory or whatever you would call it. The next area that I would like to go over has to do with BPM Composer. When you create a pr project in BPM Controller, um, Composer. Uh, you can see that I'm going to just create a simple one. And you create it using this particular GUI wizard. You are provided a request whether you want to have a application approval workflow of these different types. These look very similar to the human tasks that are available within BPM Composer itself, or the types of um, approvals that you would have within BPM. And you can choose, for example, simple. And that gives me the ability to choose groups. And if you look here, you can see cross domain connectors indicating that this is coming from the LDAP and super user we also referred to. And if we go here, we can see that we have the ability to assign users as approvers of the workflow as this project goes from development into UAT and or into production. So this is the approval of this project as it goes through its life cycle. Now, the next area of approval or permissions that we have is giving permissions to users so that they can access either BPM Composer or the J Developer BPM Studio and then access the project that we're working on. And there's two views or two rules that we allow, actually three, owner being the person who owns the project and is ultimately responsible for it. Editor is somebody who can manipulate all of the um, uh, artifacts within the application in BPM Composer and or BPM Studio and viewer who would, would have read-only access. So we can then say that, for example, Stuart is an editor 
and we would share it. Once we're in the application, we can return to this and you can see here that we have access to the simple approval workflow and you can change that if you need to. And you can uh, alter it as you need. And you can also see that we have access to the shared up here. Okay. And so you can alter that as the project progresses. So going back to our cheat sheet here, we have the approval workflow and we have what I call the approval or the, I'm sorry, the design control. And this is allowing people who are responsible for the BPM project or process to manipulate the process and create it and edit it and view it if necessary. And so these would be all of the stakeholders in the process. The next area that I'd like to go over is actually within the BPM Composer uh, and inside a process. I have um, a different application here that I'm going to be showing you. And uh, this here is showing a very simple business uh, process that has two human tasks. And you can see that over here we have what's called the initial review and the supervisor review. These are called swim lanes. And they look like they're swim lanes, as in a pool. And you can see here that each swim lane is given a role name. These are sometimes referred to as logical names. I've read them as abstract names and also as process roles. And if we close the project here, and then we come over here, you can see that we have the ability to uh, review these and even create new ones. Um, however, it's interesting to note that once I create it here, it does not necessarily create within the project itself. Um, so uh, that can be done as uh, you create new artifacts within the project. You'll also note that over here you have the approval workflow browser, which has to do with the approval workflow that we set up here. I'm not going to go into that, but I just thought I'd note it because you have some control over um, the uh, application here. Now, from BPM Studio within JDeveloper, we also have the access to the project. And you can see that I have the process opened up here. I have the initial review and supervisor review. And if we go over to the organization area, you can see that those roles are set up. I also have the ability to set up organizational charts, which allow you more granularity. So in my company, I might have a national company where I have Eastern and Western approvers. And depending on the time of day, I might have different assignments based on that. And you can also see that I have holidays and I have calendars. The calendar for the Eastern is a slightly different uh, set of time. Um, you can see that uh, the, the 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. versus uh, the Eastern is uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, so those poor Western folks have to get up extra early, but depends on the time of day that you would want them to slave away. Um, now, within the role, I can click on it and you can see that I actually have the ability to add calendars or organizational units, and I can also add users. So let's do a search for users. And you'll see that I have the ability to select users for my different roles. I can also select calendars and uh, so I'm going to be Western. And organizational units. And we'll set up Doug here. And he's going to be Eastern. 
So you can see that it gives you some flexibility as to how you assign it, because um, it might be that um, based on my particular calendar or time zone, I may not be able to be assigned a particular job, and it might go to somebody else instead who is at work based on the time of day slash um, area of the world that you are in. So you can see that you have some control over this. Now, I did not show you, there's also the groups here. So you can select again, and these are coming from the LDAP. You can see in our, our cross-domain connector, which will alert us to know that it is from WebLogic. But you also have approval group. And so if we first get rid of this, and we look at the approval group here, you can see that I have these users and I am going to set the initial review IR here. I'm going to even just get rid of this. And I'm going to get rid of this and get rid of these and save it up here. Oh, sorry, press the wrong thing. Get rid of that. Search for the supervisor review. So now you can see that I have a role called an application role called SSF tester uh, for the supervisor review. So where is that coming from? Let's take a trip up into workspace where we can see under the administration area, we have over here on the left roles, calendars, organization units, and other parametric roles that we can set up. And um, I have set this up. This is not the same thing that we set up in, in JDeveloper. This is entirely different. But this allows me, as an uh, administrator of the workspace, to set people up and set up their, their roles and uh, calendars also. And so what this allows is a way to access roles and permissions and create roles and permissions after deployment, separate from the application. And uh, it does not involve IT developers. And it can, it can involve anybody who uh, would have access to this particular screen and would be really a super user because you wouldn't want just anybody coming in here. And you wouldn't want this deleted, which is quite possible to do without it being thoroughly clear that the user is not assigned, for example, within an application. Because I could delete this from uh, workspace, and it would then affect this application that has this application role. So you have to be very careful about it. But it does allow you to maintain roles and assign users to those roles, or we could assign groups instead. Or you can assign other application roles. OK? So uh, it gives you flexibility, and it abstracts the um, assignment of users. We got ahead of ourselves here, but um, within the swim lane, you have the ability, or within the, the BPM Composer or uh, BPM Studio, you have the ability to set up the organizational units and calendars. Okay, And you can also do so at the workspace level. Here you can see workspace. And we can also set that up in Enterprise Manager. So we're going to go there next. Within Enterprise Manager, we have applications listed here, BPM Composer, and pay attention to this one and this one, BPM Composer Roles App and BPM Process Roles App. But first, let's take a look at the BPM Composer. I'm going to right-click it here, go down to Security, that screen, this one. And we're going to go here. Let's first take a look at this one, BPM 
Process Roles app, which is the same name as this application down here. You can see that I have the same roles that were available in my workspace. Here they are. Now, what I do not have in this screen is the organization screen or assignment area. So you can see that I have down here the calendar slash organization unit assignments that I can conduct here, but I do not have it at the enterprise manager level. So that's one thing to consider. If we come down to here, and I'm just going to show you this. Again, we have the same ability here. And you'll notice down here, we actually had an extra membership, I believe. Let's take a look at that quickly here. I don't think I saw it here. That was the process rules app. Yeah, actually it was, it just wasn't showing. So um, you have the roles here and you can edit and then add either application roles, groups, or users. And the groups, kind of, again, come from our LDAP. The users come from the LDAP. And the application roles that we can assign come from here. Now, this is rather interesting because you have these uh, authenticated role, anonymous role, and VPN process admin role. So there are some variations here uh, that uh, you don't see. Now, um, I do want to go over to uh, BPM Composer quickly and show one other aspect. Okay, I am in BPM Composer, and if we go to Administration and Role Mapping, you can now see... <laughs> yes, there's a lot of these guys, that I have access to project administrator and so a designer. Okay, and again, we can specify groups and you notice I'm a little bit slap happy at this point because I now have all of these groups. I have users here, okay, that I can set as project administrators within BPM Composer. Um, as an administrator, I would have access to this or I can set to so a designer roles and uh, for specific information on each one of these up you're going to have to look them up because it's just too much to present in one video uh, but you can see that there are yet more roles upon roles upon roles the next area that i'd like to go over are approval groups and this is back in workspace under the administration area and you can see here, it's over here. I have the ability to set uh, these groups up. And again, I can set up um, and I can look for users. And this time groups are not available, but I can assign specific LDAP users or I can assign an approval group. Now an approval group is referring to the approval group that is right over here. Okay, so, but you can see now that what I've created here looks very similar to what you would see in the human task. So you can set the human task at the workspace level and be able to manage it from there. So again, approval work groups are for human workflow. They are um, administered by WebLogic and or any administrator. Administrator, They're in Workspace. I haven't found anywhere else in uh, Enterprise Manager, for example, to approve them or to set them up. And these are roles that are set up by the uh, human work process. Um, and they are basically anybody in the uh, LDAP. So to summarize, you can see that there are a multitude of places where you can set up users for the various tasks and roles and assignments that they need to perform in order to interact with the BPM application in whatever form it may be, whether as a business analyst who would be um, 
creating a process in BPM Composer, a reviewer of that process, and or an implementer on the IT side, or once the application is in production, an actual user of the process or somebody who would be alerted that they have a particular task to perform for a uh, a project or excuse me a um, I guess it's referred to as a token that comes through it would be an interaction and or somebody within workspace who would then be uh, um, setting up different users and actually if we go over to workspace itself you can then also see that the application roles are also available for this they happen to be the same as the ones that were in BPM Composer and actually I don't think I went over to this one if I did excuse me for going over again but you can see that these are available for that and for this one these are available for this minus the organization and the calendar so there are many different places to maintain the data and there's many different application roles that you have to consider everything from the very beginning of the life cycle to uh, the actual implementation of the system in production. I hope this was helpful. Have a good day.